Okay, so where we were yesterday, um, right when it shut off, should have been somewhere around the five advantages of a self proprietorship. ship. Um, pretty sure we were talking about, we'll just start out with five advantages because the easiest start up was talked about yesterday. We know that uh, you can't work out of your home. That was one of the things. Uh, if you can come up with another example that you want to add to the comments of a way to do business, you can. A lot of people do it out of your vehicles, um, you know, uh, maybe a shop in your backyard. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Uh, but easy to start up, basically, I want to be a business, I have an idea, uh, I want to do this. And once you get to where you're really making a lot of money, that's when you have to experiment with your ideas and do something a little bit different. A few regulations, what does that mean? If I work out of my house, uh, how am I going to get regulated? I don't get uh, the building codes, I don't have to worry about that because I'm not necessarily a business um, that, that they're going to come in and check and grade you. Uh, like you see in the restaurants when you go in your food preparation, your A, B, and C's. I uh, definitely want to have an A if you are uh, selling food. Um, that would be a government regulation. They've come in, they've done some checks, they've looked at some things that you're supposed to do. It's up to code on how you're supposed to prepare meals, so on and so forth. So if you're working out of your home, I guess you do that. Uh, it just depends on what you are in, what you can and cannot do out of your home uh, when it comes to the business we talked about yesterday. I think I mentioned the uh, paints, if I'm making furniture and I'm painting, I may not be able to work out my home because of a chemical uh, that I'm using. So I would want to uh, make sure I have the proper uh, permits, proper uh, different uh, whatever regulations that the government may put on you uh, do that. Of course, taxing is different for a sole proprietor than a partnership because you're not splitting up the income. Um, and because you work out at home, you wouldn't have to pay for necessarily a business residence. And so there's just a lot of different things. You can really keep going with this um, with this at one of the, as being an advantage. It could also be a disadvantage. We'll talk about some of the disadvantages later. It could be a disadvantage not to work out of a real office or a real building because of location and things like that. But uh, because of a few regulations, you can easily start a sole proprietorship. Uh, obviously, a big advantage is that you're the one that receives all the profit. Uh, that's a huge advantage. But as we talked about before, uh, we mentioned before, you also carry the debt. Uh, so while the advantage is the, the profit, there's going to be a disadvantage when it comes to uh, the debt and different things. Because how did you get your business to start with? Did you put it up uh, against all your savings? Did you take out a loan on your house? Did you uh, put your four wheeler, your boat, things like that up against this business? It, it depends on how you went about it. Either way, uh, at the end, if the business fails, you're still responsible for the debt, even if it fails. Uh, if you're successful, you still have to pay the debts off. So you're going to be responsible for debts. Also, be the sole receiver of profit. We'll talk about that um, more later. You have full control. What does that mean? You get to decide. You, may, you remember I mentioned earlier about pricings uh, when we were talking in class that, you know, if you how can you react to a price change? How does Wendy's do it? How does Taco Bell do it? Well, they got to call their manager. The manager got to call their corporate guy. The corporate guy's got to figure it out. And they got to work all of those chains. And if you own your restaurants, you go to the board, you write, erase the chalk, and you write the new price in. You can react to price changes different because you have full control. If you decide you want to take Monday off because you want to go on vacation, you close the doors. If you want to, um, if, if you have your uh, somebody working for you, you want to fire them, you fire them. You don't have to go to HR, you don't have to go to Toby, you don't have to do anything like that. What you have to do uh, is fire that person. So you have full control of everything. With that comes a disadvantage, obviously. For every pro, there's going to be a con. If you have the, if you're the sole receiver of profit and you have all the, the full control and you have all this stuff, that means it's on you to make the right decisions. You have nobody to bounce that off of. You have nobody that you can go to. It's your decision. You can ask people, but they're not invested in the business uh, like you are because obviously it's your livelihood. So uh, having full control while being good, be able to take a day off, be able to take some time off whenever you want to, uh, that also leaves the doors closed when you're not there. So a lot of different advantages and disadvantages to having full control. If your business sucks, you can close it down. It's that simple. Uh, if I'm, I'm doing a business, I'm the sole proprietor of that business, and it, I'm not doing well, shut it down. If I'm doing so great, I get rich, I want to shut it down, shut it down. That's what I'm able to do as the uh, the um, sole proprietor in this situation. Um, I'm gonna try to do like five minutes. I meant to say that beforehand. We're almost at the five minute mark. Got a timer on my uh, iPad that I can watch. So I'm gonna try to do about five, maybe seven minutes. Uh, somewhere in that area there and see. Uh, hopefully that'll be a little bit shorter. May do multiples like that uh, along the way. Uh, some of the stuff we talked about were easy to start up already. Uh, small amount of paperwork, uh, legal expense, must meet a few government requirements which vary from CDC to state to state. Just very, very few things you have to do to really start a business there. As you can, uh, what are the government requirements in your city and your state? Um, you know, what legal expense do you have? Obviously, you want to make sure that, that you're not going to do anything illegal or make sure you're covered legally uh, when you do this uh, business. And then what are the requirements in your city, your state, 
Uh, I may have mentioned that already uh, as we go. So what are the three requirements you have to meet to have a business? Authorization, you have to be authorized by the government to do this business, whether it be out of your home or it be somewhere. Now, there's always that, that side hustle, as they call it, where you're making furniture and you're selling it's not really a business. But to be a legal business, you're gonna have to have some authorization uh, to do that. Uh, a business license is gonna be required if you're doing business out of a building. Most of the time, if you're doing it out of your house, not necessarily the case. Depending on what you're doing, again, it goes back to that paint thing. So it, it depends on what it is. I'm not gonna tell you exactly which businesses you can and cannot do out of your home because I don't necessarily know. Um, but there are going to be some that require a business license. Haircut and a lot of times because you have to be, um, you don't have to be, I guess, if you, want, if you want to cut people's hair illegally. But you have board certified hair people and there's a reason for that. I guess it's so that they don't cut your hair and all fall out, dye your hair and all fall out, whatever it happens to be. Um, and so there's a board for that. Uh, so you must obtain a business license um, to do most of the time to do business. And that's one of those things uh, that you have to that the government's going to require depending on where you're working out of. If I have a business, but I'm not operating a home, I have to have a site permit, as I mentioned there. Um, a site permit is obviously just saying that I have, well, I'm working, I'm doing connecting business out of this building, where this building happens to be. And of course, you have to have a name. Uh, and if you're not using your own name, then you have to get it uh, basically trademarked, if you will. You have to register your name. Okay, so if I want to have a business that's called Coach Nick, I don't have to register that name even if there's another business out there because that's my name. But if I am going to have a business, I have to make sure I register a name because I don't want to use Pizza Hut because we know what happens if you use Pizza Hut and you're not actually Pizza Hut, you can get sued. That probably wouldn't happen, but it's a possibility for other names out there that are a little bit more vague. So we'll stop the video here. I'll pick one up.